raindrops. Settle, settle down. Um, I'm going to embarrass myself and talk about all of the books that I bought in January. Yes, this is all of them. It's not a lot, is it? Oh my god. I don't, I don't even know where to start. I just, I, okay, here's, here's my reasoning behind why I did this. I finally came back to my apartment for my second semester of university, and uh, back home we don't have bookstores, so I'd been on a book buying ban for like a month, way too long, and um, I went to the bookstore a couple of times to, you know, help with the stress of university. And uh, I also ordered some stuff online. Um, let's just say us book influencers are named influencers for a reason. I was influenced. But, you know, it was worth it. I, at least I can make a fun video for you guys. If you're on a book buying ban, I hope that I don't make you break your ban, but at the same time, just break the ban. I just know that I have a whole lot of books to show you and we're gonna jump right into it. So I'm not gonna go into any order of like when I bought what. I'm just gonna take stuff. Uh, do keep in mind there are a couple books in here that I was sent from either the author or the publisher. Uh, I will let you know which one of those are that. First one is uh, this. This is The Figure in the Carpet by Henry James. I had ordered this book on Amazon because I needed it for one of my classes. I dropped that class, so I don't really have a use for this anymore. Uh, why did I drop the class? Well, here's a little quick story time. Uh, the professor that was teaching this course, Contemporary Literary Theory, English major here, hi. Uh, I had taken two classes with him last semester. He was, he was a decent prof, and so I took, another, I took this class with him again this semester. And I went to three or four classes since university started, and um, he assigned us way too many readings. I, I was not, like, did not have any type of, like, understanding that we had other classes and readings to do. And then in all those classes, I still did not understand, like, okay, we're learning contemporary literary theory, when is that gonna happen? When is that gonna start? Like, he was full on giving us a history course instead of learning contemporary literary theory, and I just, I did not, I just didn't like it. And I didn't want to make myself go through it. So I dropped that class and um, I'm doing an honors in English, but a, also a minor in visual and material culture studies. And I'm very close with the head of the department. And so I emailed her and I was like, professor, save me, please. I don't want to take this class. I want to drop it. There are no more English classes. What, what can I do? And she was like, you can do an independent study if you want. You can, you, you know, like I'll be your supervisor. You can do it on anything you want decided to do it on my internship at Fable, best company in the entire world. If you don't know what Fable is, a little promo here for you guys. Fable is an amazing app where you can create a bunch of book clubs, you can join book clubs, you can make your own. I love it. I've been using it with my uh, classmates for my forest ecofiction class, but I also have two book clubs for, you know, public use. I have one which is my Tabby's annotating book club, and I have another one, which is Rainy Day's Call for Romance, which where we only read romance. The tabbies, we kind of explore various genres. Anyways, I will have my clubs linked in the description if you're interested in joining a really fun book club. I'm doing an independent study in VMCS on my internship at Fable. And I could not be more grateful. Anyways, basically I bought this for nothing. It was only like $8 though. So I'm not super mad about it, and the what's written at the back is slightly intriguing. It's a quote from the book. It says, I think it's from the book, I'm guessing it's from the book, but it stretches this little trick of mine from book to book and everything else comparatively plays over the surface of it. The order, the form, the texture of my books will perhaps someday constitute for the initiated a complete representation of it. So it's naturally the thing for the critic to look for. It strikes me, my visitor added, smiling, 
even as a thing for the critic to find. I have no idea what this is going to be about. Um, I, I'm, it's a short story, you know, it's like, what? It's 69 pages. I can give this a shot just for the heck of it, you know, just to get the, um, reading count up, but we got this. And then, because I've been seeing this everywhere, whether on Book Talk or Bookstagram, I, I just, I had to hop on the train. I had to. I had to. So, I'm, I don't know what this series is called. I know they're like standalone, like a standalone series. I can't tell if, I don't know if this was the first one or not. But anyways, this is Untying the Knot by Megan, is it Megan or Megan? I'll say Megan. Uh, by Megan Quinn. Uh, this is a second chance romance. Riot Bisley is my husband. Yes, the former third baseman for the Chicago Rebels, an absolute heartthrob of the Windy City. That Riot Bisley. The first time I ran into him, he was grumpy, a horrific host, and let me... Oh, wait, this is a spin... Am I supposed... Is there another book that I'm supposed to read before this one? Oh, don't tell me I did that. It says a spin-off from the bestsellers and not so meat cute. Wait, are they the same characters or are they standalones? Oh, Huxley, Huxley Kane. Okay, so that's another guy. Okay, I think, I think we're good. They're, they're standalones. Are they? Please tell me they're gonna cry if they're not. I wanna read this so bad. Yay, okay, there are standalones. Uh, they are probably interconnected though. But anyways, the first time I ran into him, he was grumpy, a, hor a horrific host and let me on his sofa with nothing but a nylon baseball flag to use as a blanket. Ooh, interesting. The second time, he reluctantly bought me dinner, stared at my chest the entire night, and still sported that permanent frown. Ooh, we got a grump. Oh, yay. The third time, well, that was a game changer. His smile captured me, his teasing charmed me, and his touches excited me. So when he was called up to the majors, that didn't stop us from knocking it out on the park. Hold up. So when he was called up to the majors, that didn't stop us from knocking it out of the park and all the way down the aisle. Eleven years later, I'd love to say we're happy as ever, but the man who sent me dirty text messages every day is long gone and Mr. Frowny Face is back. He's so focused on trying to build a life after baseball that he doesn't see the life we've already created together. So I make the hard decisions and her serve him divorce papers. Oh, this is gonna be good! Problem is, my husband refuses to accept those papers. Instead, he has a new game plan that makes untying the knot of our marriage a little tricky. And just when I thought I wanted to be traded, he's slowly tantalizingly roping me back in. I love second chance romances so bad. Okay, expectations for this? I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be either four and a half or five stars. This is what I'm thinking for this. Let's do this. I, I will try to guess what my ratings will be. This, I'm guessing like either between a two and a half and a three and a half. I got a comment the other day. I don't remember where, but someone commented <laughs> that I always rate uh, my books like either five or infinity stars. And I think that was on a video that I was sharing um, my favorite books of every month, which they were supposed to be high ratings, right? Because they were my favorite books of every, of every month. And But I do realize that I often rate books pretty highly. And I'm not, like, I'm not doing it on purpose. I just, I enjoyed those books. I have not read a lot of books that I did not enjoy. Um, maybe it's just because my rating system is not strict enough. Or maybe it's because my rating system is different than the way you rate your books, right? But I just wanted to say, like, I would absolutely do a video of books that I rated two stars. Only problem is I have maybe two books that I rated two stars. And I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but this year I will try to be a little more thoughtful about how I rate my books just for the sake of providing you my opinion because I now, you know, I'm pursuing social media a little bit more like, not completely full-time, but I am doing this more seriously, and so I want to share with you as much opinions as I can, and if giving, like, I hate being negative, I hate giving a bad review, like, I, ju I just don't like it. 
<laughs> I it makes me feel horrendous. I don't like it. So maybe that has affected my ranking a little bit. But anyways, just a little, I don't know, a little message because I saw that I don't know where that comment went, but I wanted to address it and just say like I I'm not doing it on purpose. I just genuinely like I I I've enjoyed every book I've read and I don't like if I'm reading a book and I stop it to read something else I don't consider that a DNF because I go back to read it but should I consider it a DNF even if I go back to read it right like I'm I don't know anyways next we've got Hooked by Emily McIntyre I have never read an Emily McIntyre book before uh, I've heard amazing things. Uh, I do have one of her books back at home, but I never read it. I follow her on social media, so I have a kind of general idea of what her writing style is, and I'm so excited. I have not read Good Spice in a while. This is kind of like a Peter Pan spin-off, but it is far from the actual Peter Pan, you know, traditional story. Like, it's not about a young boy who runs away to never land, to never age. It's like... I, I will read you the back for this one as well. Um, he wants revenge, but he wants her more. James, as in like Captain Hook, right? Uh, has always had one agenda, destroy his enemy, Peter Michaels. So James is like Captain Hook and Peter Michaels is like Peter Pan, but like, you know, it's so different. It's more like a, not mafia, but you know, a little bit more dark. Uh, when Peter's 20-year-old daughter, Wendy, obviously, shows up in James's bar, he sees his way in, seduce the girl and use her for his revenge. It's the perfect plan until things in James's organization begin to crumble. Suddenly, he has to find the traitor in his myths, and his plan for revenge gets murkier as James starts to see Wendy as more than just a pawn in his game. Wendy has been cloistered away most of her life by her cold, wealthy father, but a spontaneous dine out with friends turns into an intense and addictive love affair with the dark and brooding James. As much as she knows James is dangerous, Wendy can't seem to shake her desire for him. But as their relationship grows more heated and she learns more about the world he moves in, she finds herself unsure if she's falling for the man known as James or the monster known as Hook. Ah! Okay. And there are also, there are two other books in the Never After series. I don't know if, like, are they all connected? I don't know. Uh, but I only bought one because that's something that I'm working on this year is don't buy the full series, just buy book one to get started. And especially because this is Bloom Books, $26. So I just bought the first one, but... Oh, Lost Boy by Ruth B. I love that song so much. Oh, I'm excited. I'm I'm very excited for this. I I waited until Emily's books were in store instead of buying them on Amazon just because the books when you buy them on Amazon they're so stiff and it's just it's so hard to annotate it. So, I like this better. Anyways, uh expectations for this, I think it's going to be either a four and a half or an infinity. I have high hopes for this. I hope I will not be let down. Okay. I'm so energetic today. I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm I'm in a very good mood. So if I, I, I'm okay. Next book, there was only one left of this one at my local chapters and I could not find it and I was about to cry because one of my favorite bookster grammars, uh, Jessica, I will put her at here. I absolutely love her. Her annotations are adorable. Her account is adorable. She is adorable. Bless her. She's great. She was reading this and she shared some of her favorite quotes and moments and I was like, I need this. It's a double POV and he is completely smitten with her. Like he, he would, oh, I, I love double POVs. So this is The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Ooh, Sangu Mandana? I, I, I'm so sorry if I mispronounced that, but this is she. She's very pretty and really cute. Um, so, a warm and uplifting novel about an isolated witch whose opportunity to embrace a quirky new family and a new love changes the course of her life. 
Okay. As one of the few witches in Britain, Mika Moon knows she has to hide her magic, keep her head down, and stay away from other witches so their powers don't mingle and draw attention. And as an orphan who lost her parents at a young age and was raised by strangers, she's used to being alone and she follows the rules. Oh! With one exception, an online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. She thinks no one will take it seriously. Oh, that's interesting. But someone does. Oh, okay. An unexpected message arrives, begging her to travel to the remote and mysterious Nowhere House to teach three young witches how to control their magic. It breaks all of the rules, but Mika goes anyway and is immediately tangled up in the lives and secrets of not only her three charges, but also an absent archaeologist, a retired actor, two long-suffering caretakers, and Jamie, the handsome and prickly librarian, oh my god, okay, of Nowhere House, who would do anything to protect the children, and as far as he's concerned, a stranger like Mika is a threat, an irritatingly appealing threat. Oh, I like, I didn't read the blurb until now. As Mika begins to find her place at Nowhere House, the thought of belonging somewhere feels like a real, a real possibility. But magic isn't the only danger in the world, and when peril comes knocking at their door, Mika will need to decide whether to risk everything to protect a found family she didn't know she was looking for. That is not what I'd expected. But Jessica rated this infinity. I have a feeling I might rate it infinity as well. So I'm going to say between four and a half to infinity for this too. I'm really excited to read this. I'm, ooh, I love it. Next. Oh, she's a beauty. She is a hardcover, but she doesn't have a dust jacket. So that's a plus. I wish it had like sprayed edges. That would be so pretty. I cannot believe I paid $38 for this. I'm insane. Oh my god. Okay. But at least she's pretty. Right? Like... <sighs> Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. A novel by Heather Fawcett. I thought, like, when I saw this book come out, I didn't know that it was like a romance story type thing. I just know that I'm absolutely obsessed with all things Fae and I needed it. And again, Jessica, same, same Jessica that read this book. I think she's currently reading this and um, she said that this is grumpy sunshine but she's the grump and I absolutely love when the the female main character is the grump and the male main character is the sunshine. I just, it's very refreshing. So apparently this is what happens in here and a Kermado- Kerm- Kerm- Kermagenly? Kermagenly? Is that it? A Kermagenly professor journeys to a small town in the far north to study fairy folklore and discovers dark magic, friendship, and love in this heartwarming and enchanting fantasy. Cambridge professor Emily Wilde is a genius scholar who is writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore, and Emily lives for her work. Slight. She empathetically prefers the company of her books, her dog, Shadow, and the fair folk to, to other... Lover. So when she arrives in a hard scrabble village in the far north, in the far north, Emily wishes only to focus on her studies. She certainly doesn't have time for a new arrival. Where was I? No. Her dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival, Wendell Bambleby. Oh, we got academic rivals in here too! Who manages to charm the townsfolk, muddle Emily's research, and utterly confound and frustrate her. Oh my god. Ooh. But as Emily gets closer and closer to uncovering the secrets of the Hidden Ones, the most elusive of all fairies, lurking in the shadowy forest outside the town, she also finds herself on the trail of another mystery. Who is Wendell Bambleby? And what does he really want? To find the answer, she must unlock the greatest mystery of all. Her own heart! Oh! Oh, I'm excited! Oh! Again, I, I usually, I rarely do this. I never read the blurbs. I'm just like, okay, someone shares a quote on TikTok, add to cart. I like the cover, add to cart. I read the first page, add to cart. You know, like, that's usually what I do. I don't usually read the blurbs, but I kind of, I kind of like reading the blurbs right now as long as the blurbs are not too spoilery you know but this was a good blurb i think this is gonna be honestly i'm obsessed with fae and like fae folklore so i have a feeling this will be five stars or infinity 
we're gonna see. I like how I'm kind of journaling this because wh whenever I eventually read these books, I will, you know, see what happened. Next book, Georgie All Along. Now, I, I feel so bad. I feel so, so, so bad because I bought this on the 20th and it's only officially coming out on the 24th. That means that my sale did not count towards the author's um, ranking. I, I feel horrible. I somehow, I know one of my book club members had mentioned the date that it was coming out. I completely blanked. I just saw it and I was like, ooh, I heard good stuff about this. Let me just, you know, add to cart. I feel so bad. I'm about, like, I would go return it just to buy it again so that it counted. Maybe I'll just buy another copy of who knows. But apparently this is, I don't exactly know what this book is about. It's a heartfelt tale of one woman's quest to reinvent herself. Interesting. Witty reflection on how the hopes, dreams, and stories from our past shape our future. Longtime personal assistant Georgie Mul Mulcahy? 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 Okay, well, I'll try to say it right. Has made a career out of putting others before herself. <laughs> I already feel targeted. When an unexpected up, upheaval, 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 I can't talk today. Sends her away from her hectic job in hell, oh, from her hectic job in LA and back to her hometown. Ooh, Georgie must confront an uncomfortable truth. Her own wants and needs have always been a disconcertingly blank page. Hmm. But then Georgie comes across a forgotten artifact, a frantic diary she wrote as a teenager filled with possibilities she once imagined. To an overwhelmed Georgie, the diary's simple, small-scale ideas are a lifeline, a guidebook for getting started on a new path. Oh. Georgie's plans hit a snag when she comes face-to-face -face with an unexpected roommate. Oh! Levi Fanning, one-time town troublemaker and current town hermit. Oh, I like where this is going. But this quiet, grouchy man is more than just his reputation, and he offers to help Georgie with her quest. As the two make their way through her wish list, Georgie begins to realize that what she truly wants might not be in the pages of her diary after all, but right by her side! Oh, if only they can both find a way to let go of the past that hold them back. Oh. Honest and deeply emotional, Georgie all along is a smart, tender must-read for everyone who's ever wondered about the life that got away. Ooh. I like that. I re I feel I hope it kind of gives Archer's voice vibes. I feel like it would. Like especially since Levi is the town hermit, very much like Archer. I have a, oh sorry, forgot to say I think this might be a five or infinity star. Honestly, again I know I'm setting the numbers high, but it's just how I am. I'm I'm sorry. I don't like being negative. I like being optimistic. It's just how I am. Now next, I bought this book just because it's a collector's item. Collector's edition. Whatever you want to call it. How much? It was $30. <laughs> ah! I'm insane. But look how pretty. Okay. This is Morrigan, The Beginnings of the Remnant Universe by Mary E. Pearson, the same author who wrote Dance of Thieves. And now this is like book 0 0.5 in the series The Remnant Universe, which I have never heard of before and I do not own. I just really wanted the book. It's just so pretty. And the dust jacket is beautiful. Ow. But the cover has one of these, you know, and I, 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 I couldn't help myself. I literally stood there thinking, do I take it or do I leave it for like 15 minutes? And see, the issue is the mentality I have when I go in a bookstore is that like if I find a collector's edition, I'm gonna want to buy it now because I'm gonna think, what if I come back here in like a week and they don't have it anymore and they never restock it again and I, I will have lost my chance at owning this collector's edition that will probably be super rare in like 20 years from now. And so I buy it. So, you know, that's kind of a bad thing. It is a fantasy series, I believe. Um, but again, I have never... <gasps> 
Why does she kind of look like a Titan from Attack on Titan, though? I'm sorry. Wow. Oh, there we go. Discover the rest of the best-selling Remnant universe. Okay, so Dance of Thieves is included in there. There are all of these. At least I'll have, like, a good introduction to it. I, I don't know what my expectations are for this. Maybe between three and four stars i think probably i don't i don't think this would be a five stars especially since it's just like an introduction it is an introduction but should i read the other books beforehand i don't know next book <laughs> song of silver flame like i can't talk song of silver flame like night by amelie wenzhou just look at the cover that is the only reason why I bought it. I did not even read the blurb. I saw the cover, I scanned it on Goodreads to see if there was a romance because yes, I, I just love romance too much to not have it in the book. Romance is the love of my life. I am a helpless romantic. I can't help wanting romance in everything I read. But I am always up for reading something without romance. I do it occasionally. I just... Sometimes I have a hard time reading fantasy that doesn't have at least a tiny element of romance just because I have a hard time fully submerging myself into it. But I, if I'm not mistaken, this does have a little bit of romance in it. Um, I hate when they don't put the blurb at the back. But once Lan had a different name, okay. Now she goes by one of the Alation colonizers gave her when they invaded her kingdom, killed her mother, and outlawed her people's magic. Oh. She spends her night at a, as a song girl in Hakkong, a city transformed by the conquerors, and her days scavenging for what she can find of the past. Anything to understand the strange mark burned into her arm by her mother in her last act before she died. The mark is mysterious, an untranslatable Hin character, and no one but Lan can see it. Until the night boy appears at her tea house and saves her life. Ooh. Zen is a practitioner. <laughs> Zen. One of the fabled magicians of the last kingdom. Their magic was rumored to have been drawn from the demons they communed with. Magic believed to be long lost. Now it must be hidden from the elations at all cost. When Zen comes across Lan, he recognizes what she is. A practitioner with a powerful ability hidden in the mark on her arm. Ooh. He's never seen anything like it, but he knows that if there are answers, they lie deep in the pine forests and misty mountains of the Last Kingdom, with an order of practitioning masters planning to overthrow the Alation Regime. Is it Regime or Regime? I don't know. Both Lan and Zen have secrets buried deep within, secrets they must hide from others, and secrets that they themselves have yet to discover. Fate has connected them, but their destiny remains unwritten. Both hold the power to liberate their land, and both hold the power to destroy the world. Now the battle for the last kingdom begins. Oh, I like that. See, like, it's so fun to read the blurb after I bought the book without reading the blurb. It's like, oh, I, I did well to buy this. Look at that cover. It's, it's so pretty. It's too pretty not to have bought it. Ah, uh, expectations for this. Between four and five stars. I have, I have a good feeling for it. I hope it's good. Now, I finally did it. I've had this book in my Amazon cart for I don't know how long, and I have a hard time buying books online compared to like when I go in store. I just, I always talk myself out of ordering, but I finally did it. Um, the first, this is my first Devney Perry book, and it is also the first book in the Edens series. Uh, this is Indigo Ridge. I just, I love small town romances and I haven't read a good one in a, quite a while. When was the last good small town romance I read? I can't remember, but anyways. Winslow Covington believes in life, liberty, and the letter of the law. As Quincy, Montana's new chief of police, she is determined to prove herself to the community and show them she didn't earn her position because her grandfather is the mayor. Ooh. According to her pops, all she has to do is earn favor with the Edens, but winning over the town's founding family might have been easier if not for her one night stand with their oldest son. Oh! In her defense, it was her first night in town and she didn't realize that the rugged and charming man who wooed her into bed was Quincy Royalty. Interesting! Sleeping with Griffin Eden was a huge mistake, one she's trying to forget. 
He's insufferable, arrogant, and keeps reminding everyone that she's an outsider. Winslow does her best to avoid Griffin, but when a woman is found dead on Eden property, the two of them have no choice but to cross paths. Oh. As clues to the murderer lead to one of Quincy's own, Griffin realizes Winslow is more than he gave her credit for. Beautiful and intelligent, she proves hard to resist for him. And the, and the killer? Oh, damn, okay. I, that's not what I'd expected. I thought it was just a small town romance, but we've got some murder in here. Whoa, okay. I'm excited. Like that. Uh, next book I got, I bought this at Chapters. Again, it's uh, Bloom. Oh, wait, expectations for this. I have a feeling this might be an Infinity Star. Honestly, I just, I love small town romances that have intrigue, like a murder or something like that. Much like Archer's voice, there was the whole story about the car accident. Um, I just, I really like books like that where romance is still like a main plot, but there's still like, there's something exciting and intriguing happening at the same time. So between five and infinity for this one, that's what I think it's going to be. Honestly, I, I have high hopes. I have heard amazing things about the series. Uh, so we're going to see how that goes. I'm tired. Okay. So this is underneath the sycamore tree. Um, first off, the cover, she's stunning, isn't she? But then I also saw sycamore and I thought of flipped both the movie and the book because the sycamore tree in there is super important. It, it gives off Archer's voice. Because I, I think like it, it addresses some rather big trauma. <laughs> so I think I might need tissues for this one. But um, time is a luxury we don't all have. Emery Matterson's life has been broken for a while. First, she lost her twin sister, the other half of her heart, to an incurable autoimmune disease. Then her father left. Now Emery has been diagnosed with the same disease that killed her sister and her mother is falling apart. Unable to live under the same roof anymore, the only option for Emery is to move in with a father she hasn't seen in 10 years and try to start over. Okay? But nothing's harder than new beginnings, and Emery's worried she'll never get a chance to truly live, until she meets Caden Munro, the brooding athlete with more than enough baggage of his own. Caden makes Emery feel normal, hated, cared for, loathed, and loved. Somewhere along the way, Emery finds solace in the guy with the sad eyes. But everything happens in stages and nothing good ever i swear to god if this is sad if it has a sad ending i'm very tempted to look at the last page guys i'm i'm genuinely scared i am scared i hate sad books <laughs> i hate but love them i just <sighs> they put me in reading slumps ah oh. Okay, mm, I think this might be between three and a half and five. Definitely not, a, I don't think it could ever be Infinity Stars because Infinity Stars for me is usually like a book that I would reread like this um, and books with sad endings, I don't know if this has a sad ending or not, but books that are sad are usually not a reread for me. I don't know, it might be like Archer's voice and have a really happy ending, I, well, I don't know, but that's, that's what I have for this. Okay, I'm scared. Next book, I bought because of the cover. Um, she's, she's beautiful though. Look how pretty. And the other reason why I bought this is because I saw that Erin Beatty is the author of this series. I have not read it, but I have seen it on TikTok quite a lot. Um, in past years. So this is Blood and Moonlight by Erin Beatty. It is said to be a YA fantasy thriller romance and Small Favors, my favorite book of all time, happens to be in the same category. And I've been just craving a book that is similar to Small Favors in the sense that it is a YA fantasy, that there's romance, but there's also like a little spook element to it. I've just been looking for that everywhere and I feel like this might have it. So that's why I got it, um, to $27. Okay, so rising above the city of Collis is the Holy Sanctum, and watching over its many spires is Katrin, 
an orphan girl whose unique skills serve the Sanctum's master architect, for she alone can spot the buildings as flaws in construction before they turn deadly. Ooh. But when Catherine, but when Catherine witnesses a murderous a murderer escaping the scene of his crime, she's pulled into a dangerous chain of events where the only certainty is that the killer will strike again. Assigned to investigate is the brilliant and enigmatic Simon, whose insights into the mind of a predator are frighteningly accurate. As the grisly crimes continue, Catherine finds herself between caught between killer and detective while hiding her own secret. A supernatural sight granted by the moon destined to make her an outcast and the only thing that might save her and those she loves from becoming the next victim. Oh, all right. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this one. This, I think it might be between three and, nah, I don't know. Three and a, between three and four and a half, we're gonna say. That's what I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna have to count. How many books did I buy? I'll count at the end, okay? Next book, Daughter of the Siren Queen. I read the first book, Daughter of the Pirate King, early in January, back when I was still at home. I ate that book up so fast. If you didn't know, Pirates of the Caribbean is one of my absolute favorite movie series of all time. I love Jack Sparrow, and I love Johnny Depp with my entire being, okay? Love that man so much. And so I I bought Daughter of the Pirate King back in 2020 and I only read it in 2023. Can you believe that? But anyways, I read it so quickly. I just, I ordered the second book right away and had it shipped here. And I'm, I'm so excited to read this eventually because this, this series is, is oh. Alosa is so great. She, I, I love her so much. And then there's the romance, and then there's like the, you know, the action piratey stuff. And so in here we continue where we left off, obviously, in the first book. So I won't read the blurb for this because it would, it will potentially spoil how it ends in the first one. But I love this series so much. I, I think I rated, I rated the first book four and a half. I think pretty sure I rated it four and a half either between four and five and I think this will probably be a similar rating between four and five I have high expectations for this because I loved the first one so much and some people have told me that the second book is even better so then this is actually uh, the book I'm reading with one of my book clubs rainy days call for romance this is actually a book that was recommended to me by one of my followers. So this book was the book that she was currently reading and she posted about it, but she also talked to me about it a little bit. And I got, I was so intrigued and I just, I thought it sounded so good and they had it in store. So obviously I got it. This is The Man I Never Met by Elle Cook. I just like quickly read the blurb when I was like looking, looking it up. But is it possible to love someone you've never met? Already, I am sold. I'm just like, give me, give me, give me, give me. When Hannah picks up a call from an unknown number. Okay, I did not read the, that blurb. I did not read that. Hold up. She thinks nothing of it. It's just an easygoing American named Davy who misdialed her while calling into a job interview. Oh, oh, I like that. It's giving Mr. Wrong Number vibes. Okay. And when Hannah wish, wishes him luck after clearing up the confusion, she never actually expects to hear from him again. Oh. Then she gets a text from Davy saying that he got the job and he'll be moving to London, and she can't help but smile. Soon their texts become phone calls that turn into video calls, and their friendship becomes a relationship they can't wait to start in earnest once Davy lands in London. Ah. But when Hannah goes to the airport to meet him, she finds herself standing alone in the terminal, Davy nowhere to be found. Then Hannah gets another life-changing phone call. Davy won't be able to move to London anytime soon, if ever. And the reason changes both of their lives in an instant. I swear to God if he's sick. With their future so uncertain, they don't know what else to do but try to move on from each other. Though their chance at love seems lost forever, neither is either far from the other's thoughts. Will fate intervene once more to bring the two together, or will Davy always be the man that Hannah never met? Ooh! I am intrigued. I, I will be reading this in February with my book club and I'm very excited for it. Probably between 
three and a half and five stars. I think it will range somewhere in there. I'm excited. Okay. Now, I found this book when I was at the bookstore and uh, I'm so glad I found it. The only reason that I took it is because of the cover. Whatcha gonna do? Whatcha gonna do? You, you know, witches. It's so good! Okay, that was, that was. It, It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Look at that. I mean, it's it's so pretty. Just the crystals, the tarot cards, the daggers, the flowers. So pretty. Oh, okay. An unlucky witch and her know-it-all nemesis must team up in the first of... Uh... Oh, it's a series! How did I not know that? An unlucky witch and her know-it-all nemesis must team up in the first of a new spicy romantic comedy series. Could it possibly get any worse than having absolutely no magical abilities when you're a member of the most powerful family of witches ever? It used to be that I'd say no, but then I keep getting set up on dates with Gil Connolly, whose hotness is only matched by his ego. Seriously, I can't stand him. Even if I also can't stop thinking about him, specifically kissing him, but we're going to pretend I never told you that part. So yeah, my life isn't the greatest right now, but then it goes straight to the absolute worst hell when I accidentally make my sister's spell glitch and curse my whole family. And the only person who who can help non-magical me break the spell, you guessed it, Gil, the super hot jerk. Oh, I like that. Okay, now we have to work together to save my family and outmaneuver some evil-minded forces bent on world domination. Oh yeah, and we have to do all of that while fighting against the attraction building between us because I may not be magical, but what's happening between Gil and I sure feels like it. <laughs> I like this. Oh, I, just look at them. Aren't they the perfect couple? I'm so excited. When was this written? Did this is the next book out? Oh, it came out in December 2022. Oh. Cool. Okay. Okay. I think this will be between 4 and 5 stars. Again, I have very five I have a little I have very high expectations of books. I'm only now realizing that, but I really do have high expectations. We're half, uh, yeah, okay. Next book, this was sent to me by a friend, uh, my friend Brie from the States. We did an annotated book exchange for Christmas. I sent her an annotated copy of The Kingdom of the Wicked and she sent me an annotated copy of Icebreaker. Look how pretty. She's a competitive figure skater He's a hockey player, captain of the Maple Hills Titans, you know, and um, the two of them are sharing a rink, and Anastasia's partner gets hurt. Nate finds himself swapping his stick for tights, you know, he's gonna be her skating partner. So I'm guessing it might give off from Lukov with Love-ish type of, maybe? I don't know, I just know that the cover is misleading. And a lot of people have told me this is great, so I'm gonna say... Five stars for this one. That's what I'm expecting. And I also, I, I, I just need some good spice, honestly. Okay. Next book, Blood of the Lotus by Sadie Louise. I am actually friends with Sadie on TikTok. I've had her book in my cart for a while and then I finally placed an order and so I finally got it. She mentioned that it's kind of like, it's a YA fantasy kind of romance, enemies to lovers kind of type of situation. So I'm very much excited for this. It is the first book in a series, book one of Undivided. First off, look at that cover. Look how pretty it is. The blurb. Trained to kill demons, she never thought she'd join their side. Already, it's like, ooh, where's this gonna go? 17-year-old Nova Fandera has always known her duty to bring honor to her family by becoming an Undivided, a demon hunter bonded to and given strength by an angel. But as desperate as she is to prove herself, she is kept trapped within the confines of her father's estate with no explanation as to why. When she hears of the coming blood moon, a rare night when demons feed off the moon's essence and become stronger, Nova recklessly escapes, determined to bring the head of a powerful demon to her father's doorstep. Oh girl. Ooh. What she doesn't expect, however, is the aid of her enemy and a deal offered. Answers to the questions her father won't even acknowledge in return for training six young half-demons. 
but hunters don't make deals with devils. That is, unless they're left with no other choice. Nova soon discovers that the answers to her questions about her identity and family's history are more than she bargained for. A unique and powerful artifact that heeds her call, a mystical lotus tattoo. Oh, that I'm getting a tattoo after this. I'm almost 100% sure. Memories of other lives of lost love. The mysteries keep piling up with no end in sight. When a faceless darkness threatens her from chasing after these answers, Nova risks everything she's ever known and teams up with the, the very beings she was raised to hate. Yet the journey is only just beginning. A lifetime of lies and betrayals is unraveling with the red string of fate. Oh, I love the red string of fate so much. I love it when it's applied to books and movies. I love, 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 love it so much. Leading Nova to a truth no one is prepared for. One that screams for retribution and cries for the lost. But darkness will do anything to stop her, even if it means destroying the world. I have very high hopes for this. Mm, between a four and a half and infinity. That is what I think this is going to be. I have, I have a good feeling about it. Okay, next book. I only saw, I saw one reel of this on Instagram and was like, I want to be in my classic literature girly era and I bought another Virginia Woolf book. Uh, this is The Waves. Cover is adorable. But the font is tiny. Oh, I hate it so much when it's tiny. But hey, it's okay. It's not that bad. I do really enjoy Virginia Woolf. I have read, have I only read one of her books? I think I have, unfortunately. I am hoping to read more, hence why I bought this. First off, I love the ocean. I love it with my entire heart. I was brought up always near a body of water, so it's very important to me. It's also very important to my family. And so this, The Waves, is an astonishingly beautiful and poetic novel. It begins with six children playing in a garden by the sea and follows their lives as they grow up and experience friendship, love, and grief at the death of their beloved friends, Percival. I already like the vibes of this. Regarded by many as her greatest work, The Waves is also seen as Virginia Woolf's response to the loss of her brother, Tho Toby? Toby? I don't know, there's an H, who died when he was 26. Interesting. I think this will be between mm, three and five stars. Between three and five. Somewhere there. Yeah. Okay. This is what we've got left. Let's try to get through this because I'm hungry. So, next. This was recommended to me by one of my friends. This is Forbidden by Tabitha Suzuma. I just, okay, look, <laughs> this is incest, <laughs> but I, look, my friend liked it, and I trust my friend, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I, you know, people always say don't yuck my yum, I'm, I strongly believe that. Don't yuck people's yums. I will give it a shot. I'm rather open to different types of books. I don't know, are they step-siblings or not? I don't know, but I'm gonna give it a shot. It was recommended to me. It's just like, you know, some people read dark romances and they don't support that in real life, but it's interesting to read it. That's kind of the situation with this. Love knows no bounds. Loken and Maya have always felt more like friends than siblings. Together they have stepped in for their unreliable alcoholic mother to take care of their three younger siblings. The stress of their lives and the way they understand each other so completely has brought them closer than two siblings would ordinarily be. So close that they've fallen in love. Loken and Maya know their relationship is wrong and cannot possibly continue, and yet they are powerless to stop what feels so incredibly right. I think... Um, between three and a half and four and a half. That's what I'm feeling for this. Next, I've wanted this book ever since I came across the author's TikTok page. So this is Identity by Alexia Manzurani. I think that's how you pronounce the last name. I'm so sorry if it's not. The one thing that sold me for this is he's, he's a musician and she's a book nerd and he buys her a bunch of books. And it's just what bookworm doesn't like reading a, a romance about a guy that buys his girl a bunch of books, you know? It's, it's just like, we want it. And he plays music. 
hello. So I have high expectations for this. It is a little chonkier and sadly like it's an Amazon book so it's stiff. But let me read the blurb for you. Trinity used to be the life of the party. She enjoyed music. However, that all changed when she lost someone she loved. Now she can't stand to hear a single melody. Once wild and courageous, she is now turned into someone who runs away from her problems. She acts stone cold, but on the inside, she just wants someone to love. Leonidas lives off music. After all, he and his siblings didn't become one of the most famous bands worldwide for no reason. The blinding lights and the roar of the crowded stadium fueled him, but not anymore. Leonidas has become a shell of the person he once was. Now he's everything you want to stay away from. Moody, tatted, and full of sarcasm. Uh, I would not stay away from that. Sorry, I'm too much of a reader to stay away from that. What happens when Leonidas, who is known to the world as the lead singer in Times 3, is forced to move into the small town Trinity lives in? Ooh, it's a small town romance too? He quickly discovers that Trinity doesn't know his true identity. Identity. Love that. Will he tell her who he is, or will he keep the biggest secret about himself and break her in the end? A rock star and a girl who hates music. What could go wrong if they fell in love? Everything. This will be probably between 4 and infinity. I'm really, really glad that I finally bought it, because I've been wanting to read it for so long. So, I'm excited for this. Now, these two books, uh, they were sent to me by the publishers, and I have already read both of these. I just wanted to share with you guys you know, they're part of the books that I got this month. I did not pay for them though, so. I was sent an arc of Margaret Rogerson's most recent release, Mysteries of Thorn Manor, which is a novella that follows Sorcery of Thorns. And so I, I read the arc of this. I read it back in December. Absolutely loved it. It was so cute, so sweet. I loved seeing uh, the story continue and so the publishers sent me like the official copy and then they also sent me a copy of sorcery of thorns which i've already read i own the hardcover though i didn't have the paperback so i'm i'm not gonna complain i mean they sent me a free book so but um i've already read these two so i'm not gonna do like any ratings or anything. And then this book was also sent to me by the author along with a box of goodies. I posted about this on my TikTok and Instagram. Oh my god. Uh, the author, M.B. Thurman, uh, she lives in Forks. This, this Forks, yes. And she owns a bed and breakfast with her husband and the bed and breakfast was actually uh, designated as the book accurate Cullen House from Twilight and I did not know that until she sent me the book and she wrote me she gave me a notebook and she wrote me a letter on the first two pages I'm I did get emotional yes but I did not know until that the book is called summoned by the way and uh, it is the first book in a series the second book is in the works and so she and her husband's bed and breakfast is in this book and the way that I found them is I found um, they have like a group of people who cosplay and take pictures and they they cosplay as the book's characters and I found the summoned on Instagram that's the name of the account I found them and the pictures are so stunning I can't even tell you so I, I followed them and uh, they followed me back and then they reached out and they said the author would love to send you a box with her book uh what's the address and then i got this and i i am so incredibly excited to read this i cannot even tell you oh i'm so excited so dark academia vibes so much paris in the fall is magic but as Hayley weston stands atop notre dame the sensation of being watched watches through her. She wants nothing more than to feel normal, but with strange lifelong abilities, like reading minds, normal lies just outside her grasp. When Hayley re reunites with her secret love interest, Fitz McGregor, defying orders from governing officials that they remain apart, they are mysteriously followed, and Fitz must reveal an unbelievable truth. He's a witch, and so is Hayley. After arriving in Edinburgh, Hayley and Fitz partner to solve a family mystery originating during 17th century witch trials held in Forfar, Scotland. 
But the further they dig into the past, the more dangerous the f their future becomes. When research leads them to a witch raising an army in a foreign world, Haley and Fitz are forced to make a crucial decision. Align themselves with a government they distrust or allow an evil witch to destroy peace between witches and humankind. I cannot tell you how excited I am to read this. Oh, I swear to God. Um, expectations for this? Between four and infinity stars. That's what I think this will be. <sighs> We're finally reaching the end, guys. This is gonna be a long video. Oh my God. This is a box set. Uh, I got three books and that's it. <laughs> So this is a trilogy. It's the 1Q84 trilogy by Haruki Murakami. And I, again, saw this on Instagram. And I, I haven't, like, I'm absolutely in love with Japanese culture in general. But I've also taken uh, a liking to Japanese literature as of late. And I just, I really wanted to give this series a try. And so I looked it up on Amazon and I found that they had the set, all three books for like $45, which I think is not all that expensive. But then again, if like each paperback is $15, then you know, it makes sense that it's 45 Oh, is it written like manga? What? Hold up. I, I got so confused for a second. Okay, the page numbers invert. See? That confused me. Oh my god. Um. One, two. And three. Okay. I have no idea what this series is about. I just know that it's, I think it's a, a twist on George Orwell's 1984, but I don't know like exactly what it's about. It's just, yeah. So each book is like a set time in the year. Uh, so it says, 1Q84 is a love story and a detective story. It's a philosoph, it's a philosoph, it's a philosophical novel about the power of storytelling, the nature of reality, and the shifting balance of good and evil. Once the narrative begins to pick up, you have no desire to put the book down. Hopefully that's true. Okay, so each book is set like at a time in the year. So book one is April to June. Then book two is July to September. And then book three is October to December. Maybe I'll do it that way, but I kind of wanted to read each book like accordingly to this setup. Maybe I won't, maybe I will, I don't know. I have high hopes for this, especially since it's said to be a love story, but I don't expect, like I don't expect it to necessarily be like, like a rom-com, you know? Rather, I expect it to be more like more literary, you know, but still romantic and a love story. So I'm gonna say for this entire series, like the series in general, I think it'll probably be like between four and infinity. I have, again, I know, I are my expectations too high? I don't know, but that's what I'm hoping this series will be. And that is it. Okay, I'm not gonna make a long outro because my camera is about to die and I still need to put all of these books away. But um, I have no self-control. That is what this made me realize. I have no self-control whatsoever. Uh, please make sure I stop buying books. <laughs> please, like, go follow me on Instagram. And if you see me posting about, even thinking about ordering or going to the bookstore, tell me not to. Remind me that I bought Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. There are some, like I said, that I, I didn't pay for, but overall, I got 25 books in January. 25! 25 books! It is January 22nd!
and I bought 25 but I got 25 books please help me gain some level of control thank you very much I hope you enjoyed this video let me know if you've read any of these please no spoilers I am begging but let me know and uh, I'm gonna go now because I'm scared the camera's gonna die. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to join the Little Raindrops family and be part of this crazy chaos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.